All right, let's switch gears to the market because it was a tough session. Uh, although uh, for the second consecutive session, buyers materialized toward the end of the day and began to nibble. So we got some good messages there. Nevertheless, we can see we're off to a tough start in October. The jobs report adding fuel to this interest rate speculation, which has run rampant with yield spiking this week. Uh, some think it was the 3.7 percent unemployment rate that ultimately could force the Fed into a more aggressive approach with respect to raising rates. Now, I don't think that's going to be the case. I actually believe the Fed that will still hike one more time this year, three times next year, and perhaps once in 2020. The 2.8 percent wage growth number was really sort of Goldilocks, right? Not too strong, uh, not too weak, and certainly strong enough to maintain consumer spending trends. By the way, uh, I was hoping for 3 percent. Uh, we didn't get it, but I think that's going to happen very, very soon. Now, the notion that consumer confidence is building in, in, into the kind of spending that can support this market was also echoed with the release of the August Consumer Credit Report late this afternoon. The biggest increase in non-revolving debt, that's mostly credit cards, a big spike going into the holiday season. I believe the street has to get used to these yields being north of 3%. Once they do, that's when we begin the next leg of this rally. Here to discuss, Jeffrey Cleveland, Chief Economist for Peyton and Regal. He's been back with us, Maddie Duppler. You'll start your weekend after this segment, Maddie. Maddie, there we go. All right, Jeff, <laughs> let me start with you. Um, the, the jobs report, uh, the credit, consumer credit, consumer confidence, and the Federal Reserve, an interesting cauldron there. Yeah, well, I mean, the consumer is in great shape. We see it in the jobs report. 3.7% unemployment, the lowest since October 1969. Wage growth has been missing, but it is it is perking up, I think, as you noted. I think, I agree, it'll be over 3% by year end. If you look at the quarter that just finished, Charles, the, the quarter annualized figure was up 3.4%. So that's a great uh, boost there to wages. So that'll be good for the consumer. And I think you're right, faced with a really low unemployment rate, wages steadily rising, the Fed is going to hike once per quarter for the foreseeable future. So that, for me, is out over the next uh, about 12 months. That'll bring overnight rates to just over 3%. Right, which is sort of their goal. M Maddie, is, is, that, is, is that okay? It ultimately, can Wall Street, yeah. you think, live with that? Because uh, we saw this in February, right? Same thing, February 2nd, we get the job support for January, 2.9% wage increase. Oh, my goodness. Right. The alarm bells go off, and we had yeah. three sessions in February, almost 3,000 points lost between them, all associated with fear of the Fed. Right, Charles, I think you're right, and for a couple of reasons. One is that the market at some point has to get used to a little more transparency at the Fed. Powell has been very clear that he intends to get up in front of that microphone and explain what's happening in those meetings, and I think we're seeing a little hesitancy here from market observers about what does that mean? Well, we know what that means. We know that the Fed is probably going to do exactly what you laid out before because it's been telling us for months they think one more hike and then four more in the coming future. But, you know, we also have a reason to believe why the circumstances would justify that kind of movement from the Fed. We've been talking about it for the past year. Tax reform fundamentally altered how this country is going to treat business, and that's right. going to be good in the long run for both businesses and consumers. So if things start to improve, we've got, we can look at the fundamentals and identify exactly why that's the case. We don't need to have hand wringing out there and arguing that the Fed needs to be obfuscating its movements when it's been telling us exactly why it's going to move and where it's going to go. You know, Jeffrey, uh, though, if you look uh, at the composition of this, of this rally this year, the S&P, uh, over 200 of these stocks are down. 20% are down uh, over 20%. I mean, there's some real carnage. Uh, what's happening there? Because it feels like without those infamous big tech names leading the way, this whole market may fall apart. That's what some people believe. I, you know, I think the bottom line is if this cycle continues, so we are now the second longest expansion, I think we will break that record sometime mid next year, so this will be the longest economic expansion. As long as the expansion continues, I think stocks can continue to rise, so that's the backdrop. Interest rates are rising right now, maybe causing a little, few alarm bells, but they're rising for the right reasons, better growth. Right. This cycle extends. Equities will be fine. So right. this is a buying opportunity, I think. Hey, I'm looking at my chops, too. Thank you both very much. We'll see you soon.